Well, here we are on our last unit of the year. Wow, what a year. So let's talk about this. Our topic is dif solving differential equations and graphing them. Now, actually, this is not new, folks. A differential equation is an equation with a derivative. Well, we've been dealing with derivatives since the beginning of the year. And just like in algebra, if you want to solve a differential equation, or solve any equation for that matter, you have to use the inverse operation. So what would be an inverse of a derivative? Well, of course, an integral. And that's why we haven't learned how to do this until now, because now we've mastered, or come close to mastering, our integrals. So say, for example, you have this equation below. This is a differential equation. And the reason being is that it has a derivative. So what we'll learn to do is we'll learn to solve this for a unique solution, and we'll learn to graph it. So let's take a look. So let's say we're given this differential equation, and we're given an initial condition, and we want to find another value. Well, we have been doing this before, and I'm going to connect our prior knowledge to what we're doing now. So what we've been doing is we've been finding a solution. And remember, when you find a solution to a differential equation, you we must find a solution. It has to be in an open interval. Now, the reason why it's open interval, because remember, derivatives don't exist at endpoints, because you can't find the limit from the left and the right at an endpoint. So technically, a derivative, a differential equation, doesn't have a solution at its endpoint. Also, then your solution must make the differential equation true, of course, and it must contain the initial condition. So when we've done this before, what we've done is we've take, we've used our fundamental theorem of calculators, calculus, because we know that the integral a derivative will be its change in values. Well, here, what are the values we're curious or know about? Well, we know about two, and we want to find three. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says when you take an integral of a derivative, it's its antiderivative, which would be y, and it's the change in the antiderivative from three to two. So up to this point, what we've been doing is we've been finding the area under this curve, and we've either used our calculator or we've evaluated this by hand by doing an approach using a power rule for this example. And then we'll find the value from 3 to 2. So we plug in 3 and subtract that from 2. And we get some constant, right? And then that constant then, since we know that y of 2 is negative 1, we would add 1 then to the constant. And we would find the value for 3. And so our solution, it must be in the interval of the derivative function, the differential equation. Well, we know a parabola, a quadratic, which is our differential equation, is continuous and has a domain of all values, so that would be good. We know that the solution must make the differential equation true. So that number we find then, when we plug 3 and the solution in, we know that the derivative must be true at that point. And we know that the solution we find has to include the value given, which we used the given value here in finding the new value. OK, I hope you followed me on that. But let's take a look now in regards to what we're doing now. So if we're solving a differential equation, recall that a function can have many antiderivatives, but they all vary by some constant. Or we've been labeling that constant c. That would be the general solution. Now, when we solve a differential equation, we want to find a unique equation that makes both the differential equation true and some other initial condition. And just a tip, the order of a differential equation, just like our normal equations that we learned from Algebra 1, we always will go from the highest derivative, let me scroll down a little, involved in the equation, to the lowest, OK? so. In the problem that we had before, if we wanted to solve this differential equation using our fundamental theorem of calculus, what we would do is we would take the integral of x plus 1 dx. And let's say we're going to use this value here. So we know 1 is one of the points given. And we want to write an equation that's a general equation for all values of x. Oh, but I have a dilemma here. And what is that dilemma? 
Well, the dilemma is that the value, whoops, that didn't work out well as a highlighter. Let's try that again. The value here and the value here, the variable there, is the same. And we know that when we want to replace the value of the upper limit into the integrand, that they must be different variables. So let's rewrite this equation again. Okay, so we just need to have our syntax correct. So if I were to write this again using the fundamental theorem of calculus, what we would do since the integrand, now since the value we're writing for is x and the initial value is 1, then the integrand has to be a different variable than x. So for example, t plus 1 dt. So the equation stays the same, just using a different variable. So now, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the antiderivative of a rate of change would be y of x minus y of 1. Now, continuing to solve this, we would have t squared over 2 plus t evaluated from x to 1 is equal to y of x minus 2 since that is the given information. And then now we would evaluate this using x, x squared over 2, plus x, subtracting that from 1 half plus 1. And this would be equal to y of x minus 2. Remember, our whole goal here is to write an equation, a unique solution for this differential equation. So now I have x squared over, whoops, I'm sorry, eraser x squared over 2 plus x minus 1 half is equal to y of x minus 2. So let's add 2 to both sides. x squared over 2 plus x. When I add 2, I get plus 3 halves. Oh, I just caught a mistake of mine. Did you catch it? I hope you did. I did an adding error right here. Right. What's 1 half plus 1? Why, that is 3 halves, Kleiber. There we go. So it's minus 3 halves. And now if I add 2, um, 2 plus negative 3 halves is a positive 1 half. Phew. Okay. So this is the solution. We just solved a differential equation with a given point. Now how do we check if it's right? Well, it's going to be right if I take the derivative of this equation and it's what was given at the beginning. Well, the derivative, if I bring the 2 in the front, the 2's cancel out, so I'm left with x, and then the derivative of x is plus 1, and the derivative of 1 half, of course, is a constant, 0. So, and then also it's true if when I plug the given fact in, if the point 1, 2 makes this equation true. So does it? Is 1 squared over 2 plus 1 plus 1 half, does that equal 2? Well, look at that. It does. 2 equals 2. So I have just found the solution to this differential equation. Wow. Okay. That was a lot of work. Well, today what we're doing is that is one way of approaching it using the fundamental theorem. Now, another way to approach this is actually to use what we call separable differential equations. Okay, so it's very similar and actually you might like it better. So let's say I'm given this differential equation again. You'll notice it's the same one with this given point. Now this is going to look a lot like what we were just doing with u substitution. And what we're going to do for this approach is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate. So in other words, we're going to put all of the variables that are like terms on one side. So in this example here, I want to put all the x's on one side and all the y's on another. So the dy will stay by itself. Well, then I'm going to multiply both sides by the dx. So I have x plus 1 dx. And that's what we did in u substitution also. Do you remember doing that? Now the second step is we're going to integrate, integrate. Now I say it twice because we, if we integrate the left side of the equation, we must integrate the right side of the equation. So we're going to integrate, integrate. And when we integrate dy, we know then that we'll have y. And if I integrate x plus 1, I get x squared over 2 plus x. And don't forget, step 3 is add a c. Add a c. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Ms. Kleiber, why didn't you add a c to both sides? Good 
thinking. Because, you know, if I really added a C to both sides, y plus C equals x squared over 2 plus x plus C. Now, the tricky part here is that these C's are not actually the exact same value C. They could be any constant that makes it true. So really, it'd actually be more correct to maybe label this C a different variable so that we can understand that better. Well, check this out. Let's say this is uh, what other things sounds is good for constant, maybe K. So if this is some kind of constant, and over on the right side, we have some constant. Well, you know, if I'm solving for Y and I move the constant over here, we still end up with some constant. So it's a little redundant. So mathematically, what we'll be doing each time is we'll just be adding a C to one side of the equation. Okay? Okay, we'll practice this a lot. So now I have x squared over 2 plus x plus C. And now what we're going to do is we have to solve for that C. So right at this point, right now, we're going to plug in the value 1, 2. So separate, integrate, integrate, add a C. And now we're going to solve for C. So when x equals 1, we'll replace x with 1. So 1 squared over 2 plus 1 plus C is equal to 2. So let's solve now. So 2 is equal to 1 half. I'm going to give myself some more room here. Sorry for the smart notebook water brand. Plus 1 plus C. So that's 1 and a half. And so if I subtract 2, I get 1 half is C. Very good. And now the last step is let's write this equation here with the value C. Y equals X squared over 2 plus X plus 1 half. So you notice we got the exact same specific unique equation as we did the previous method, but we approached it a little different. This is called separable differential equations. And so last slide for this part is if you're given a differential equation, and it has both terms y and it has both terms x in it. What you're going to want to do is if it's separable, then we separate the variables by writing it in the form where we move the y's together, move the x's together, and then we find the solution by anti-differentiating, wow, easy to say, each side, or in other words, taking an integral of both sides. So let's come back together and do some practice of this.